What are some downright disturbing facts you know? Hundreds of dead babies were found in the septic tank of a mother and baby home in Tuam, Island. No one has any idea how many children died under the system countrywide, or how many children were forcibly taken from their mothers and sold to childless families abroad. Ever thought about how whales and dolphins die? When they get too old and too weak to swim up to the surface to breathe, they start to slowly sink towards the deep, cold depths of the ocean, and suffocate in the dark. Lobotomies were a complete guessing game and the procedure's success was mostly based on whether or not the patient was deemed calm and quiet post-surgery. Walter Freeman, the man who popularized lobotomies in America, wasn't even a surgeon. He had to partner with an actual surgeon to attempt the procedure, but Freeman didn't care for the length of the surgery, so he invented the ice pick lobotomy, use an ice pick to access the brain by hammering the pick through the bone above the eye and near the nose, and then just wiggling it around. As stated before, Freeman was not a surgeon, so when the actual surgeon he partnered with walked into their shared office to find Freeman with an ice pick halfway in a patient's brain, their partnership ended immediately. But that didn't stop Freeman from continuing his work with lobotomies. He too raided the nation in a van he called the Lobotomobile, offering the procedure to insane asylums with problem patients. Freeman completed over 3,000 lobotomies throughout his career, of which nearly 500 patients died and 1,000s were left in a vegetative state. And on top of that the only reason lobotomies stopped was the development of antipsychotic drugs, not because the procedure was banned. When filming Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory in Germany in 1971, they had trouble casting the Oompa Loompas, as people who suffered with disabilities were simply killed by the Nazis during the war. Till that movie was made in Germany, I would have assumed GB. In the 90s, a British Airways pilot was sucked out of the cockpit at 23,000 feet due to a poorly installed window seal failure and he got pinned against the airplane as the flight attendants tried to keep him from completely getting sucked away, but he survived, suffering only a few bone fractures and frostbite. Pays to keep your seatbelt on. Weirs are drowning machines. Those tiny dams you see on rivers are shaped like this kinda under the water and this shape causes a circular flow of water. As the water circulates, it gets aerated, lowering the density. So if you swim in one, not only are you trapped on the longest spin cycle, but you can't get out because the water isn't dense enough to swim in. Apparently they recommend that if you're caught in one, that to try and escape you should tuck your chin and curl into the fetal position with your arms wrapped around yourself to try and be caught by the current and pushed along the riverbed past the hydraulics of the boil line. When the German battleship Bismarck went down after hours of constant battering, 1,500 of the 2,000 men crew were able to jump into the ocean. The Royal Navy rescued 500 of them, but left early due to lack of fuel and the threat of submarines. Over 1,000 men were left on the ocean to die, having just survived pure heck. Today the area of the wreck is littered with thousands of leather boots, having once belonged to the crew which died because they were abandoned. The average age of the crew was little over 20 years. There's also the British battlecruiser HMS Hood which was sunk by the Bismarck and had only 3 survivors out of a crew of 1418. Sudep's sudden unexpected death in epilepsy. There's a small chance, 1 stroke 1, 0, 0, 0 per year on average, that someone with epilepsy will just die during their sleep. There are a lot of theories, but no real reason for this has ever been found. I have epilepsy and just learned about this a few months ago. Makes sleeping more fun. The crew of Challenger likely survived over a minute after the initial explosion. They were killed by the impact on the water. There is evidence that members of the crew even started trying to complete emergency procedures. I could be butchering some of these details since it's been a while since I learned about it. But there is this amoeba that's super rare found in freshwater and people who go swimming have an extremely unlikely chance of contracting but if they do it will pretty bunch obliterate your brain and kill you and there's pretty much nothing you can do about it. The Japanese brutalities during the Nanjing massacre was so extreme, the head Nazi representative in the region complained directly to Hitler about it. You know you fricked up when the fricking Nazis of all people are complaining about it. 
NASA was once talking with Sesame Street to send Big Bird into space on the Challenger rocket, but they went with a teacher instead. Which means that in an alternate universe close to ours Big Bird was a casualty in the Challenger disaster. Dang. The trauma my generation felt over the Challenger explosion would have been nothing compared to watching Big Bird blow up on launch. In 1972 a plane crashed in the Andes on a snowy mountain. 16 of the 45 people, mostly guys of a rugby team from Uruguay, survived there for 72 days. They had to eat the human flesh of the people who died during or after the crash in order to survive. No one knew where the plane crashed exactly and they were only found because two of the guys walked for 10 days over the mountains and down into a valley where a farmer found them. For anyone interested, the flight was called Uruguayan Air Force Flight 571, and a few of the survivors wrote books about the experience. I can really recommend the book Miracle in the Andes, 72 Days on the Mountain and My Long Trek Home by Nando Perado, one of the two guys who searched for help. The other books are also worth reading though. Chlamydia is so rampant among koalas that some populations have tested 100% positive and it's one of the main reasons the koala population is decreasing. And they get it in their eyes. India would have one of the highest suicide rates in the world. In Canada, the incidence is 10 times that of the rate of the rest of the Canadian population. India were 25 and under are driving the rate. One large study found that 80% of the suicides were by hanging. The same study found that about 1 in 6 of those who died by suicide were victims of sexual abuse. Since 1970, the number of fish in the world's oceans has declined by over 50%. I think a similar pattern basically holds for all life on earth. Insects, birds, mammals, all down by 50-70% since 1970. There are people in Manila. Philippines who are literally scrounging for food scraps on a hill of garbage to recook and sell it. Locals call it pag pag meaning to brush off the dirt. There's some place in China where the street food vendors literally get their oil or something like that from the sewer and cook with it. In Japan, 1945, 144 Dutch soldiers were beheaded after being forced to watch their wives getting hacked to death with swords and their children being thrown down a mine shaft. Those were different times. I often think of medieval battles, thinking, man, you have to get up close and personal to fight and, more than possibly, die a brutal death. When JAL Flight 123 suffered a sudden decompression and crashed at MT, Otsutaka, after 32 minutes of struggling, the initial forward team that went to assess the situation saw at an area they thought was completely devoid of life, and they went by helicopter. They waited until the next day to go there, not expecting anyone to have survived. There were, in fact, many people who could have survived had they received appropriate care. The only four survivors relate that they heard the cries and moans of the wounded, including children, that gradually died off through the night until the next day. Also the US armed forces were willing to help, but didn't get called in, so many Apurchines to at least try to save lives, but none taken. That a man with half his brain blown out the back of his head and the top of his skull missing, can still blink, look at you and attempt to form words. In the 1940s before the bombing of Nagasaki and Hiroshima the US made around 1.5 million purple hearts in anticipation of casualties. Since the bombings occurred there was quite a surplus of hearts left over, thus some of those very hearts are still given out to this day. You left some crucial details. The 1.5 million purple hearts made are for the anticipated number of casualties for the upcoming invasion of mainland Japan scheduled on November 1945 and March 1946. One of the reasons Japan has such a high suicide rate is because when the police can't solve a murder they label it as a suicide and end the investigation. This guy stabbed himself 20 times. What a crazy suicide. The police once helped Jeffrey Dahmer kill someone. Dharma had performed a homemade lobotomy on 14-year-old Connor Axe in Thassam Phone. Dharma had left the boy alone while he went out, and miraculously Sing Thassam Phone managed to actually escape his apartment. Despite being cognitively impaired from the lobotomy, he worked his way out to the street where a group of women discovered him. Being rightfully concerned for the boy, they called the police for assistance. The police arrive and mistake the boy for being drunk. 
The group of women grew frustrated as it was clear the cops weren't taking the situation seriously. During this time, Jeffrey Dahmer made his way back home and discovered the unfolding situation. Dahmer was quickly able to manipulate the situation into his favor. He convinced the cops that they Connor Axinthasamphone was really his young boyfriend and that he was just drunk. The cops believed him, much to the dismay of the group of women, and returned the poor boy to Jeffrey Dahmer, sealing his fate. When you go swimming in the sea or a lake, you might be swimming with a few dead bodies. In many lakes, it is a guarantee. Lake Superior is full of dead bodies turned into human soap because the lake is too cold for the bacteria necessary to cause bloat. The bodies remain deep in the lake and the fatty tissue saponifies. Researchers in the 70s kept a dolphin in a flooded basement and gave it acid and jerked it off to try and teach it to speak English. The dolphin committed suicide because it fell in love with the handler that jerked it off. At any moment the earth might be blasted by a gamma ray burst from deep space and fry about every living thing on the surface of at least half the planet. All this might never happen. Either way, there's absolutely no way to see it coming because it travels at the speed of light. Any indicator we could detect that it was coming would arrive, at best, simultaneously. During World War II, Imperial Japan operated prisoner transports known colloquially as hex ships. As the name implies, conditions aboard them were downright atrocious. Prisoners were crammed into steaming hot, unventilated cargo holds to the point that it was basically standing room only. Food and water was incredibly sparse. There were no bathroom facilities, and abuse from the guards was commonplace. Death from starvation, infection, dysentery, dehydration, and so on was common, and more suffered from delirium due to the conditions. Many of these ships were sunk during the war, and oftentimes the vast majority POW cargo would be unable to escape and go down with the ships, the worst being Junio Maru, sunk by the submarine HMS Tragedyne with 5,620,000 slave laborers. Though the Japanese gave no indication that these ships were carrying POWs, and them also transporting soldiers and military equipment made them valid targets. I read a story once regarding one of these ships full of British POWs. When it was hit and was sinking the Japanese locked a POWs under decks and abandoned ship. It is said that the POWs could be heard singing it's a long way to Tipperary on the way down. Terrifying way to go. When TWA Flight 800 crashed due to fuel exploding the center fuel tank some people were decapitated from the force of the blast. Some people's necks snapped cleanly off from hitting the back of the seat ahead of them. Comma some people were decapitated from the force of the blast. Some people's necks snapped cleanly off from hitting the back of the seat ahead of them. This sounds pretty ideal as far as ways to die in a plane crash go. Honestly, you don't even have time to worry about the plane going down. A prion is a protein inside the body that's weirdly folded or twisted in such a way that it mostly works properly, but in certain circumstances it can completely gum up the body's internal chemistry. The problem is that when the body makes copies of proteins, it can replicate the mid-folded one and make more of them. Generally though, proteins are used up and new proteins are made, and it all stays about level. Occasionally, though, that mid-folded prion gets in somewhere it shouldn't, and causes some of the most horrific, incurable, and difficult to detect and diagnose disease in the world. One prion disease just turns off your brain's ability to sleep and it takes you 3 or 4 weeks to die of terminal insomnia. Another is bovine spongiform encephalitis, BSE, better known as mad cow disease, which in humans is called Creutzfeldt jacob disease. CJD is 100% undetectable, can lie dormant for decades, and when it takes hold it can only be officially diagnosed after you're dead by testing a sample of your brain tissue. After this sample is extracted from your corpse and analyzed, every tool used in the diagnosis process basically needs to be thrown in the bin, because there's number 100% sure way to destroy prions. They aren't bacteria or viruses, just protein chains with a funky twist to them, so you can't kill them like you would other pathogens. And if a single one gets inside your body, it becomes a time bomb. There's a reason anyone who was in the UK during the mad cow outbreak is banned from donating blood for life in most countries. Except, presumably, the UK. The gum chimpanzee war took place in 1974 and involved a clan of chimpanzees, led by, I believe, 
Humphrey, the leader of the clan, they used organized methods and strategies to violently kill all the members of a peaceful clan that occupied the territory next to there. Several victims were cannibalized and those killed were often peaceful and surrendered to no avail before being torn to pieces. I honestly don't like chimps and this has strengthened that view. Not that I'd hurt one but still they scare me and they're aggressive af. From a first hand account, I'm second hand. The CIA used Central Florida police airstrips to import sea into the United States. If you compare weight ratios, the effect of your car running over and crushing a soda can has the same ratio as a fully loaded freight train striking a passenger car. Unwanted babies used to be be left to die in the woods. When they were found, they would be handed over to the state who would then give them to wards of the state, mental patients and convicts, to raise. And surprisingly most of those babies also died. The older and wanted children were often sold and used as little more than slaves. That all changed when Georgia Tan popularized adoption. It became so popular that her adoption agency started stealing babies from poor people. When the occasional poor person fought back, the state found against them because clearly a child growing up rich is better off than a child growing up with their biological family. Wrestler Rick Flo was one of those stolen babies. Researchers have found a link between cycling and impotence. One study showed a 28-year-old cyclist whose blood flowed to his sexual organs had the sexual performance equivalent to that of a 60-year-old man. Essentially, this is caused by the pressure from sitting on the long, narrow tip of a bicycle seat too much, which can lead to permanent damage. Only more reason why I stopped. Still don't understand why bike seats are formed this way. Why not putting a simple stool on there or something? Statistically speaking, you are more likely to get murdered by a family member friend on Christmas day, than a random person any other day of the year. Tinder will assign you a personal rating based on how well your profile fares to other people. This is calculated based on your match skip ratio. I'm so glad I'm done with Tinder. That's just depressing. The BGP routing table controls the entire internet. It's a 512 kilobytes file and it is how edge routers talk to one another. It's not regulated in the least. It's completely controlled by whatever company is pushing out the update that hour. Facebook's last major outage happened because internal BGP routing tables propagate the wrong routes. Japan lost all its internet service in 2017 during what is called the Japan BGP event. The 25th of August 2017. No one likes to discuss it because of how easy the exploit is. I won't put it here, but it's very, very simple. All it would take is two or three very disgruntled network operators and three ISPs or more to just push a bad table out and the internet would be down for days or weeks. The internet is held together by bubble gum and duct tape. In the early 2000s a startup perfected the algae to oil process where raw sewage was fed to genetically modified algae air. The algae would consume CO2 and sewage and would purify the liquid to a point where it could be filtered and used as drinking water all while photosynthesizing and releasing 0 02. After several months the algae would be farmed and oil would be extracted. Hence the formula was something along the lines of sewage plus CO2. Algae equals oil plus H20. Exxon bought the company. The US government was exposed for illegally spying on its citizens through their webcams in 2013 and no one even really gave a crap or did anything about it. They mostly just called the dude who did it, Edward Snowden, a traitor. So it's still probably happening. In an effort to stop illegal consumption of alcohol during prohibition, the US government poisoned bootleg liquor leading to the deaths of up to 10,000 people. In the Ganges River of India, it is common to find dead bodies in varying states of decay along with a heap of garbage mixed in, but the people still consider it a holy river and continue doing water burials with dead bodies. With an increase due to that covered spike about 8 months ago, any local animals and scavengers would clean up the corpses by eating the human remains. Which begs the question, is the Ganges river viable for dumping murder victims instead of its purpose of a holy water burial? Fun fact, George Harrison's ashes are in there, or at least a part of them. That seals sometimes rape penguins to death or rape then eat them. Thanks our holop for that one, I can't freaking unknow that. And now we can't freaking unknow that. Thanks a lot Amara. 
when Peter Curtin was about to be executed by guillotine in 1931, he asked if his hearing would be working. Curtin wondered if he can hear the sprinting of blood from the stump of his neck. He was kinda right as hearing is often the last sense to go upon death. If you live enough close to an industrial park it is most likely you live in a place where the survival chance is nearly zero in case a CHEM accident happens and therefore you are not even part of an evacuation plan. I actually live less than like 30 minutes from a nuclear power plant La Mayo. Oh and there are multiple industrial parks near here. All of the typical movie signs of rabies such as foaming at the mouth, seizures, and weakness, etc. are all signs that it has progressed to the point beyond saving and there is no cure. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.